a new tool available in MarkEdit uh, that takes advantage of some of the work being done with the uh, interface translation is an automatic field translator. Um, when we first started working on doing automatic field editing uh, so that I could provide some internationalization um, to the market interface, one of the questions that came up is could that same approach be applied uh, to generating localized indexes, uh, specifically around, say, subject headings. So what I've done is I've created a plugin, because uh, this is one of those things I figure is going to be pretty special use and probably only used by a handful of people. Um, that would allow you to select a field and subfield combination and generate um, a localized automatic generated indexes for those terms. Now these aren't perfect, these are automatic generated terms, but the idea being that you could potentially provide subject, uh, local subject access, um, indexed access for terms in other languages um, and hopefully improve the search capability in your catalog. So the way that you pick this stuff up, uh, you go to the plugin manager. The specific plugin that you're interested in is the one called Field Translation. So we'll go ahead and download that. Plugin gets activated the next time MarkEdit starts. So we'll close MarkEdit and open it back up. And now if you check the plugins, you'll see the plugin translation there. Right now the plugin must be run from within the Mark Editor. Um, if this ends up being pub, if this ends up being popular, I can set it up so it can run outside of the editor too. Um, but the workflow that I've kind of envisioned is that this would be something that you would run from within the editor. So we'll go ahead and open the editor. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick a file. I have a simple file here. Uh, I have a set of um, 650s. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it process uh, all of the 650 subfield A's. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the plugin. So here's the plugin. Uh, the plugin utilizes Microsoft's uh, translation API. So you have to have an account with the API. So um, here we'll go to the translation tools. So um, I have my stuff set up here. So I've added my keys. If you don't have a key, there's a link here so you can follow out and create uh, the key that you need. So this right here is a, a walkthrough of how you pick up uh, your key. So it tells you what you need to do. So logging in at live.com, you get yourself an account. Um, you can go to the marketplace, you register, and um, there is a, a free service on the translator here. You get uh, 2 million characters a month, um, which is actually quite a few. Uh, especially if this is kind of your only use for it. So it's it's a free service in that kind of in in that particular uh, case. And if for some reason you were somebody that needed to use a lot more than that, you have the option to be able to buy um, additional blocks. But I've been using this for um, my localized purposes and I've yet to actually use more than a handful of uh, I, I've yet to go over a million characters. So. And that includes um, other use that I use it for. So anyways, so this is how you get your key. Um, once you get your key, you set up, you register the application. In this case, it'll tell you how to walk through it. You register your application. You'll notice that um, in my instance, the client ID, I called it Mark Edit. You can call it whatever you want. You have a client ID. It generates for you a secret ID. Those are the two pieces that you need to have that you put into that box. When you have that information, you can take it back here. You put it into the preferences, mark edit, uh, whatever your client ID is, whatever your password is. It's going to mark. It's going to mask it so that you can't see it. You can check this box. It'll unmask the password so that you can see it. Mark edit encrypts the password, so it encrypts and decrypts the password so that when it's saved in the configuration file. Um, it's encrypted using one of the cipher methods um, that uses a, a private key, a hash, and a salt. So um, those are all set up uh, localized by to your uh, particular computer. So I've got my key set up. Um, so it's all set up to run. So all I need to do now is that the the tool in place. I just need to tell it what field am I going to translate on. 
So I'm going to tell it the 650 subfield A. Um, I'm going to tell it to output it in the 653 subfield A. Um, if I don't check create individual field, it just concatenates it all together into a single 653 with multiple subfield A's. Um, generally, that might that probably will be fine since your field links um, can be up to uh, just about just under 10,000 bytes. Um, but if you think that you're going to have a too many of them, you can always create individual fields. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select a couple just to show how this works. And tell it to translate. And down here it tells you which element it's translating so that you can see uh, what it's actually going about and doing. And then when it's finished, it'll pop up and it'll tell us that it's done. And we can go down here and we can see that it has added the various elements to our field. Now again, these are automatically generated, so um, they may not be perfect, but the idea behind this is that um, to provide the ability um, to create some uh, language specific localized indexes. Uh, these are indexes that people likely will not see. They're just basically for searching. So um, maybe it's uh, useful, maybe it's not. Okay, hopefully uh, if there's any questions you can um, feel free to contact the list, the Mark Edit list, or me specifically. And um, as uh, people uh, use this, maybe we can make it work a little bit better. Okay, thanks.